what's up today we've got one of the most beautiful and unknown examples of Fischer's brilliancy where he sacrificed a queen and crushed his opponent early in an opening. Fischer was playing white against uh, Neiman playing black and by the way what I love about this game is that uh, this is actually a game from a simul that Fischer played on 50 boards and therefore his opponent who's playing black is an amateur player. And here's what's nice here. It's kind of like you can ask Fischer which opening he thinks is the best against an other amateur player, right? So it's like in real life you could go and ask him, hey Bobby, what do you think I should play against uh, an average wood pusher? And he says, yo dude, play the king's gambit. I mean, maybe the conversation would sound differently, but you got the point. So here, he starts off with the King's Gambit, an extremely aggressive opening, and right here, instead of Knight to F3, he went into a very interesting sideline, Bishop to C4. And it makes a lot of sense, because actually, you know, the whole purpose of the King's Gambit is actually to open up this F-file, because very often you'll have your Rook over there after a castle, and together with the Bishop you hit the most vulnerable square of black, the F7 square. So you kind of want for this quick attack to happen, but it's also a more solid attack compared to, you know, the Scholar's Checkmate, for example. Uh, as some of you guys uh, commented in a weird manner that we gotta call this kind of an attack post graduate checkmate. So that's kind of like that. That's what you're after. Anyway, let's continue. Black played a move pawn d5, which is a nice way to counter it. Black gives the pawn back to speed up their development. White captured the pawn. Black plays knight to f6. Um, by the way, just to address quickly the question, what if black goes queen h4 at some point? Well, that's just a single check that doesn't really do that much, and uh, very often, in, in reality, black delivers this check, but then it backfires, because very often uh, black tries to go for the scholar's checkmate themselves, you know, <laughs> kind of like that. But that really doesn't work and backfires really badly for black, because you play, you know, to stop this queen of two, of course, you, you don't want to overlook this. You play pawn d4, hit this bishop away, then you play knight f3, kick the queen away, then you pick up this pawn back, and your attack just rolls out very successfully. So that's not really a big issue for white. Back into the game, black did not play queen h4 check, but played knight f6 instead, which is a more classical approach. Uh, white played knight c3, just to neutralize black's pressure and to provide enough support for white center. Black goes bishop b4, also makes sense developing. White simply goes knight a3, also a nice way both sides so far develop, so far so good. Black castles, white castles. And here, let me ask you a question actually about this position, because, you know, of course I can just show you, you know, the brilliant combination of Fisher, but I think it would be cool if we also can learn a few takeaways out of this, right? So that you can also learn how you can become a stronger player. For example, if you're playing this position as black, it is black to play, how would you play here as black? Just Think about this for a few seconds and then we'll discuss it together, okay? Um, there are a couple of things that black can do. In in real game, they took here on c3, uh, which is actually wrong. Uh, many years ago, I recorded a video where I've discussed the rule to take is a mistake, which simply conveys the message that very often when you force an exchange without a particular reason, this is wrong because that usually actually helps your opponent, such as in this case. This exchange on c3 was not provoked anyhow, and uh, black just did it voluntarily. And in, in response, white recaptured with a deep pawn and now our bishop is active. It's ready to grab the pawn back. And black helped white to achieve that without getting any other advantages in, in return. So that's what I'm talking about. To take is a mistake, meaning that uh, you shouldn't take when there is no particular reason, there is no particular benefit that follows this exchange, okay? Uh, otherwise, of course, if you can just win some material, no problem, go ahead, do it. But if it's an unjustified exchange, such as in this case, don't do it to take as a mistake, is, is a perfect example for this. Uh, by the way, what should have Black done instead? Let me ask you this question. Well, again, let's come back to very basics. You don't have to kind of overthink. Sometimes I think people make round moves not because they know too little, but because they kind of know too much of the rules and they over overcomplicate matters. In an opening, you just got to develop castle and connect the rooks, and that's mainly all you got to think about. So, I mean, black needs to develop, right? You got to play, for example, knight c6. If you don't know what to do, just develop, playing the simplest way possible, and it's a good option. All right, chess is a simple game if you follow <laughs> all the proper rules. Now, in the real game, black took here on c3, which is wrong, helped white to open up their bishop. Now, black played pawn c6, taking the bishop, bishop returned back. And here, black played queen b6, check, check to the king, um, which is also kind of funny. Um, it, turns, it seems that Fischer is, is the one who said the phrase, 
Patzer sees a check, gives a check, and it turns out that <laughs> he was right. And that's kind of similar to the previous rule to take as a mistake. Like, usually there is no point in giving a check for the sake of a check, right? If there is no follow-up for your attack. Like, in this case, Black gives a check, and all it achieves is that White King relocates into a safer square. And Black can't really develop any significant attack anyway, simply because they don't have any other pieces involved, and you can't you know, attack the king, which is surrounded with a lot of defenders with a single queen. So that's not serious anyway. So this queen b6, again, rather helps white than, you know, damages white's position in any way. So queen b6 was another common mistake. <laughs> again, let's recollect Fisher's quote. Um, now black took here on e4, threatening knight f2 fork, and Fisher addressed it with the move queen to e1, which covers this square, as well as pushes the knight back. And black didn't want to move the knight back, so they played rook e8 which potentially also prepares knight g3 check discovered attack of the queen. Now, how would you play here as white? Fischer is known for a sim simple brilliance, where he plays very simple moves without like overcomplicating matters. And in order to address this threat, he simply developed a bishop and picked up the pawn. Now, if knight to, to g3, we simply can recapture it with our queen, no problem. Somehow I can't draw this arrow properly. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> queen takes g3 in case black jumps there. So that's not an issue anymore. But black found the other way to take advantage of this discovered attack potentially and played knight to d6, which hits the bishop, but also hits the queen simultaneously. Now, what do we do about that? Um, if white would be a more timid player, he'd probably play something like bishop b2 or something like that, just to save their pieces. But Fischer felt that he has a lot of advantage in activity and he was ready to start an attack and punish black for not developing his pieces properly, and so he sacrificed the queen simply. He said, hey, I'm ready for that. He took there on d6, and after an exchange on e1, we've got a pretty nice thing that, yes, uh, black won the, some material advantage here, but in, in contrast to this, we can see an interesting thing, that white is fully mobilized, and there's also an interesting idea suggested by Kasparov. He said that in order to evaluate the power of an attack, you just got to compare the quantity of pieces on the side of the attack. For example, if white attacks on the king side, these like four uh, files, so to say, let's compare the number of pieces of white and black on this side of the board, and we can see that white is completely dominant here, because all of the black's pieces are on the opposite side of the board on the queen side, which already gives you an idea, without any calculations, that this attack should be successful for white. Now, right now, white is simply threatening rook to e8, back rank checkmate, and black covered that with the move bishop to d7, but of course white continued his attack and Fischer played knight g5. So actually, the original idea of the king's gambit finally worked out. We're hitting this weak, vulnerable square f7, this time with three of our pieces, and black really can't save it, so black decided to simply develop knight a6, but after rook takes f7, actually it turns out that black is still in a big problem, because now we're attacking this bishop, and besides that, after virtually any move of black, let's say, you know, pawn h6 or something like that, we can play a rook to f8, and this is a beautiful checkmate with a double check, and a discover check, and all kinds of checks, and it's actually a checkmate. Considering that Fischer played it in a simul on 50 boards, that's a pretty cool game by Fischer indeed. Uh, by the way, I've tried to also make it uh, useful so that you can learn a couple useful takeaways and make your game stronger. And if you enjoy that, I have also have a separate course called Top 25 Middle Game Concepts where I go more in-depth onto those 25 most important chess concepts that if you learn, you basically learn the chess strategy, chess positional play up to the master level, you're good to go. So if you're curious, I'll link it down below and you may check this out later. Uh, also, if you want to know more about the King's Gambit, I've got this video where I cover the top 5 fastest checkmates in the King's Gambit with some cool tricks that you may check it out. Wishing you a great rest of the day. Bye for now.